Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Start and Forge Irish Stout. Delighted to be here in San Francisco. Devin Haney, Regis Progre. Eddie, how are we? Boxing Social, eh? They rolled out the big boys this week. Big fights, know, big hitters. They, they were obviously like fight of the year, Haney Progre. We like Parsons and everything, but we need the credible journos. Matt gets the call. Here we are, ready to go. Massive show on Saturday night. Your words, not mine. Uh, shout out to Charlie. And um, look, huge fight. Everyone's been talking about this. It's done terrific numbers. I believe the ticket sales have gone through the roof. You've got two genuine world-class elite fighters going at it. Devon's moved up in weight. He's left them belts behind, that cushion that he could have had. Mm. And Regis wholeheartedly believes that he stops him on Saturday mm. night. What a fight. Just talk to me a little yeah. bit about it and the build-up. It couldn't have gone any better from every aspect. From the promotion, from the content, to the promos, to the ticket sales feel very lucky to be here and I think it's a big moment for us as well you know we know we've done mega fights in the US with Canelo and and others but this is you know really a guy that we kind of built in Devin Haney against a guy that we signed all our promises delivered to everybody and I think they'll deliver their promises to the fans on Saturday night for a massive fight like you said no cushion no security for Devin Haney to lose and fall back to 135 all or nothing for him and Regis Progre a chance to put himself up in superstar status, which you know he believes he should be and deserves to be, and that's what victory will give him on Saturday. What have you made of Regis as uh, comments of he says, look, we know that Devon's your boy. Yeah. Uh, what have you made of that? Because you're obviously stuck in the middle. You've worked with Devon yeah. before. He's back now. You signed Regis, but you know it's about making these big fights. But what do you make of them comments? He's saying, look, you're on Devon's side. Yeah, I'm never really a fan of, of making a fight with two of your own guys. Um, but listen, I've known Devin a long time. You know, we, we took a chance on him three or four years ago. We had a dream for him to become undisputed. He couldn't do the final part with us. Like we were frozen out, but he tried. And we've always been close. So I can't deny that, you know, we, we haven't got some kind of relationship. But I like Regis Progre. And when I signed him, I gave him a promise that I would give him a homecoming and I would give him a mega fight. And I've delivered for him. And at that stage, you let them both go into the ring on a platform like this and say, made the best man win. The implications for the winner of this fight are huge. I know um, Sam Jones is keen, obviously, what Jack Catterall's next move is. And um, there's Ryan Garcia knocking about, which, you know, in terms of numbers, you know, what's what's next? What's the what's happening for, to first off, Jack Catterall in terms of his next fight? Um, and is there interest in Ryan Garcia? Yeah, I mean, look, the whole of the £140 world is watching on Saturday or will be here. You know, Matias, uh, Jack Catterall, um, Richardson Hitchens, you know, you've got Dalton Smith, you know, and also, you've got Liam Paro against Montana Love on this card. It's a big fight for the division. So, we can't, you know, people talk about, you know, Sam is on me all the time, Sam Jones. Ryan Garcia against the winner of this fight is massive. Richardson Hitchens, Jack Catterall, they're all there, right there, to take the opportunity. The IBF have also made a final eliminator with Richardson Hitchens against Jack Catterall. Great fight, probably not the fight that both want, but it is a way to guarantee you a shot at the world championship. So those guys are all going to be in big fights. But, you know, I guess really it's a, it's a situation and a case of the biggest fights get made. And if you're talking about the biggest fight for the division, it's Ryan Garcia against the winner of Saturday night. Mm -hmm. But there's no guarantee that will get made. So we've got a number of others waiting for the, in the wing ready to go. Look, it's a terrific fight. And it's a cracking undercard. I want to talk to you a little bit about Deontay Wilder's comments. He's come out and said, look, Eddie Hearn doesn't really want to make this Anthony Joshua fight. And he said he knows that he's the only person making matchroom any money. He said, so they aren't going to put him in with someone like me. But with this Saudi deal, I'm sure that's what we're all working towards, is it not? We're making money every week. So that's not quite true. Um, and by the way, we don't make money out of Anthony Joshua in small fights. I mean, you've got to have half a brain and understand that the way that we make our money is when our fighters make a load of money. So when Anthony Joshua fights Deontay Wilder, guess what? We make a lot of money. And guess what? I back him to beat Wilder all the t every day of the week. And by the way, it's a tough fight. But the only, I say the only reasons, but the main reason that this card is happening in Saudi is so that we can all work together and make what I think is the biggest fight in boxing, which is Joshua Wilder. It's all irrelevant if they both don't win on December 23rd. But, you know, Deontay Wilder surely at this point knows of all the conversations that are ongoing and everybody's keenness to make Joshua Wilder. So he will see in due course. Any talks materialised regarding shared pay-per-view for December 23rd? Uh, I think it's one for the zone. I mean, I would think that, you know, everybody wants this fight to go as broadly as possible. 
you've got a lot of promotional companies, a lot of networks that are involved. You know, you've got TNT, you've got ESPN, you've got you know a number of other promoters involved that have the the platforms they work with. If the if the zone feel like it's yeah. beneficial, and Saudi yeah. feel like it's beneficial to add an additional platform or outlet or partnership, then yes, I think there's a very good chance that will happen. Amazon Prime, PBC, you're going to get asked about this. Yeah. They decide to make that jump now to a, to an application. Huge for the sport, good for them, Amazon Prime. Yeah. What do you make of that deal? And it's obviously it's another outlet now for sports fans to go yeah, watch. It's brilliant. I mean, I don't know the financials of it. Obviously, is it a shared pay-per-view? Is it is there a rights fee? But on the outset, it's a great look for boxing. Anytime there's a new broadcaster coming into the fray, it shows you the sport is hot. It shows you there's demand. And, you know, I keep saying about boxing, when we get it right, it works. Look at Saturday in here. We're all going to be in here going, wow, this is unbelievable. And, like, when you get it right, it works. So hopefully PBC can get it right. Hopefully all the promotional companies can get it right. And we can keep making sure that broadcasters invest in the sport and it, that it delivers for broadcasters. You talk about um, obviously giving boxing like the praise and things like that when things go right. We are seeing um, this Conor Ben situation still drag on, and I saw that apparently Simon Jones come out and said he's had a, a chat with Conor yeah. privately. Um, I was very surprised to see that that was even entertained by either party, to be honest, after everything that's been yeah. said. But where 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 are we at now? Because we've had the decision. Are you saying? I remember speaking to you before. You said no. This fight has to happen in the UK. Is there a chance at all this does bounce somewhere else? It could, but we want. That there's a lot of fights that are leaving the UK at the moment. We talk about keeping the sport going. We need big fights in Britain. This is the biggest fight that could happen in Britain. So for us, we want to make that happen. We've got a few days to make the fight. If not, it's irrelevant anyway, and we'll see where it goes. But listen, Simon Jordan, in my opinion, believes Conor Ben. I think he thinks he's innocent. Um, and his comments allude to that. But once you sit down with Conor Ben and actually talk through the situation, it's very easy to to follow that that belief. It's irrelevant, really. You know, positive move, I guess, for both, but irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. And you know, the the strategy remains the same: just make the fight. They've had a bit of back and forth on Twitter, as they always have with Conor Ben and Eubank, whereas Eubank's fired back yeah. and said, you know, go get your license, yeah. wanker, kind of thing. Um, if this fight. Camp, camp mid. Are you looking at the likes of um, another opponent like Kel Brooks and I'll come out of the retirement if the if the yeah. fight's right? Is that the type of thing you're looking at? If Kel, not, because Kel, I, I love Connor versus Kel. Not for February. There's no way Kel will be ready. But Connor Benny's fighting February the third. UK, US, wherever. We want Spurs against Chris Eubank, but he has to fight on that date. He will fight on that date. He's been training a long time for that date, and we are, we have started negotiations with other opponents but cards on the table we're doing everything we can i'm speaking to chris eubank with Callar and you know everybody's he's the only problem in making this fight everybody well, else chris eubank yeah, yeah everybody, why, why is he the just only money because he feels like he's in a great position he wants as much money as he can i've seen the money he's been offered it's absolutely mental so if this fight doesn't happen it's not a chris eubank yes. jr nothing else correct so are we going somewhere else for this fight to be sanctioned then no will be at Tottenham. If this fight gets made, it'll be at Tottenham Hotspur on February the 3rd. Under what sanctioning body? Is what, that's what I'm alluding to. If you're not getting British, what you're doing? the British Boxing Board of Control. If not, obviously, you know, Callis Island is, is not licensed by the British Boxing Board of Control. I'm sure there's a lot of other organisations around the world that would absolutely love to be involved in a mega fight. Finally, I saw a picture that came up on my timeline of you and Jarrell Miller and you sort of commented about yeah, yeah, yeah. this. Um, there's been a lot being said and you've always been adamant, look, don't ever envisage working with this guy again, yeah. owes you money and all this kind of stuff. Do you ever see a way back that relationship for everything that's gone? Because it was quite, it was from what the transcript that I read, yeah, well, it was I quite straightforward, wasn't it? See how Frotch pipes up again, he's got a big mouth these days, might have to have a little, give him a little roll around. Um, What's Carl said that's uh, no, upset you? Oh, I doubt you said, I actually spoke to Jarrell Miller this week about it. We were laughing about it. Because what did you actually say then, horse's so, mouth? So he came up to me and he said, I, I'm telling you virtually word for word what was said. He said something like, oh, you're scared now. And I said, I ain't scared. Listen, I've been around a long time, right? If I get ironed out, I get ironed out. And of course, I don't, I'm not standing here telling you that I could even be competitive against Jarrell Miller. I would get thrown off the stage. I would get killed. But I'm also not going to have someone talk to me like shit especially when 
I feel the way I do about the situation. And he said to me, you're scared now. I said, I ain't scared of you. And he said, went on a bit. He said, no, you are. And I said, I'm not. And then he said, why didn't you back me like you backed, I don't know, Conor Ben or whatever? I said, because I don't believe you. And he said, I'll have someone pull up on you in New York. Like, you better watch your back. And I said, either fuck off or go fuck yourself. And he messaged me this week saying, oh, if you would have said that, I said, I did. I said, did you or did you not say, I'll have someone pull up on you in New York? And he went, yes, I did. He said, but you didn't say, F off. I said, yes, I did. Because I wouldn't know what else to say. At that point, you're all in. You can't, you can't back down at that point. Listen, my ass weren't even flapping, but it's flapped many times in the past. But I was just pissed off with him because he doesn't seem to understand or acknowledge how I might be feeling about the situation. Last time, he gave it all the big one. And he failed free drugs. I've seen the reports of how those drugs were in, would be take like. Yeah, you can see a, a different connotation between so this and Connor. In then, in my opinion, yeah, because I believe I, I know so much more about. But having seen all of these substances and the way that they're taken and the fact that they would have been injected into Jarrell Miller, in my opinion, after all the talk, Jarrell Miller used performance-enhancing substances to try and give him a physical benefit in a professional fight with Anthony Joshua, my mate, right? And I, I've said this before, I like Jarrell Miller. I think he's actually great for the sport, but I can't just forget what happened, and I'm not prepared to. So if he's going to say something to me, I'm going to say something back. And if he kills me in the process or knocks me out and I go over and unfortunately pass away, so be it. But I'm not going to be two-faced at the same time and say, oh, Jarrell, mate, this is, this is how it works in boxing. Hello, mate. Oh, I love you, mate. Great to see you. How are you? No, I don't like what you did, and I'm always going to tell you that. Don't mean that I don't actually get on with a guy. I've known him a long time. But when you come over me and, and threaten me like that, I'm not, regardless of what you think of me, I'm not just going to go, oh, oh, my God, I can't believe what he said, and just run off. I'm going to stay and go, fuck off. Because you ain't going to, I've been, I said, as you said to you, I've been to New York 50, 100 times since that fight. But again, he messaged me in a week, I've got no beef with you, please. But, like, I'm not just going to not let my opinions, and they're never going to change. Would I work with Jarrell Miller again? Look, if he beats Daniel Dubois, which I truly believe he will, I think it's a terrible fight for Dubois at this stage in his career. But you'd work with him after all that then, what you just said. At the end of the day, if AJ turns around to me and says, "Let me, I, I want to fight Jarrell Miller, I'm not going to go, oh, I don't like this because I, AJ's the boss. Jarrell Miller talks a great game, right? And if he beats Daniel Dubois and starts calling out AJ, our focus is Deontay Wilder. But in some time down the future, I can't rule out AJ against Jarrell Miller. But that's an AJ decision, not my decision. Okay. Well, look, looking forward to um, this Saturday in San Francisco and next week in Arizona, Sonny Edwards, uh, Bam Rodriguez. Terrific running up till Christmas. We'll catch you after fight night. We'll do. Cheers, mate.